And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're talking about a game, Voluspa. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Uh, which is a re-theming of a game called Kachina, which is from the uh, long-lost company Bucephalus, but this one was redone by White Goblin Games. And this is a tile-laying game. It has a theme of Norse gods, and we got Thor and Odin and all those cool dudes that you're placing, but essentially the game could be quite themeless as you just place tiles and try to score points, and some of the tiles have special abilities. It's a very simple game to play, does that make it a simple game to master or learn? Let's take a look. There's a whole pile of tiles that come included with the game and so you'll sort those out and each player is going to draw randomly from these tiles and they're going to get five of them. Now there are four tiles that are called an expansion. Um, I'm not really sure why you wouldn't throw them in. They're just four different special abilities and since you have to learn eight special abilities as it is, I don't know. There's a little scoring board here where you can keep track of how many points you have. If you go over 50 or 100, you get a special little token to show that you've gone that far. But what's going to happen is one tile is going to be placed in the middle of the table, and then a player takes his turn. Now, on your turn, you are going to take one of the tiles from your hand and place it adjacent to a tile that's already on the board. And then you see if you will score. The way you score is if your number is higher than every other number in your row and or column, you score a point for every tile. So by putting this guy here, I have just scored two points because I, I, he's the highest in that row and he gets two. If I would place this troll here, then that would be, he would also score two. But then if they're both out and I place this eight here, he would score four because he's the highest in this row, which is two, and the highest in this row, which is also two. Uh, if I put out this uh, guy here who is a one, he would not score because he's not the highest. However, we do need to take, in effect, their special abilities. This one here is that jerk Loki. You might have seen him. Destroyed New York. Uh, when he was placed, everyone next to him becomes a zero. Now, he still would not win this row, because this lady down here is a three, but that's his special ability. The two big ones, uh, Odin and Thor, uh, the eight and the seven, they only, they have no special abilities. The troll, when you place him, after he's placed on the table, no one can be placed next to him. So I actually could not have put Odin there. Um, and if I had put Odin here, it, he wouldn't have scored for the troll, he would have just scored two. Here would be a great place to put Odin, Except no, because Loki would change him to a zero. But if I put Odin over here, now he would score four points. So you have to take into effect all the different special abilities. When the troll goes down, they're smelly. No one wants to be next to them. Dragons can go on top of other tiles, which can cause them to score for a row, depending. So you can put dragons on top of other uh, people. Wolves, or Defenrir, uh, when you put these guys down, they're worth four for each wolf in the same row. So this second one now is worth eight, which would score him points for that row. This tile, when you place it down, can be put down like normal, or you can replace a tile that's already on the board and take that tile in your hand. So instead of drawing a tile, you've stolen a tile. The Valkyrie is pretty pathetic. They're only worth two. However, if you have a Valkyrie at one end of a row and a Valkyrie is placed at the end of the row, you score for the whole row. Even though she was changed to zero, two Valkyries will conquer the whole row. So that's the stuff in the basic game. In the advanced game, everybody starts with one of these hell characters. When they put that her down, they actually put her down face down like this, which can break a row or column and separate it. Or you can put down uh, these giants will show up and they can bump something from one end of the row to the other end of the row. And then this guy here is a messenger. When you play him, you can play another tile right away and then draw two. And then you got the giant sea serpent, uh, which can score across gaps if possible. So that's basically how the game works. You will continue going and playing and drawing until you are out of tiles. After all the tiles are gone, then whoever has the most points is the winner. It's a very simple game. 
Simple, of course, is a very relative statement here because while the gameplay is simple, knowing where to put the tiles is going to be the, the cash of the game, and that's the whole point of the game. The, there's lots of special powers, and it's one of those games you put some down, and you say, well, wait a minute, there's Loki, he changes that, don't forget this person's over here, there's a troll, you can't put him next to that, there's a dragon, there's a lot of different things going on. It's not so much that it's overwhelming, but you certainly have to keep it in check as this grid slowly builds and expands over the board. You have to decide what goes where. Now, this game is for two to five players. I will never play this game with five players again, and I don't even think I will ever play it with four players again. I hate it that way, okay? I, I hate it that way. Hate, hate, kick the table over, hate it that way. Because it's extremely random at that point in time and extremely slow. What I mean by extremely random is, maybe not random isn't the right word, but when you draw your tiles in a two or three player game, you can put a tile out setting yourself up for a future move, possibly. The other player in a two-player game or the other two players in a three-player game can mess you up. That's fine. That, that, you know, that's, it's kind of luck. But in a four or five-player game, they will always mess you up. It will always happen. So you must play the best optimal tile that you have out of your five on the board, which means you need to take each tile and check every position that that tile can go in to score the most points in a four to five-player game. That takes a really long time. And it may be interesting when it's your turn, but when it's other people's turn, it's not even worth looking at the board. It's not even worth saying, oh, okay, I'll, I'll figure out my turn ahead of time. You can't because people put out tiles and that changes everything. So just uh, with that many players. With two to three players, not a bad game. Tile laying down, trying to do the different powers. Like I said, throw the expansion in. The extra powers are neat and cool. And I like how the weaker people can be powerful when combined. Those Fenrir can be super powerful if you get too many of them. And then you just throw down uh, Thor and Odin and there are just lots of points, dragons and stuff. It's, it's, it's neat how it fits together. And even though I said the theme was pasted on at the beginning, it doesn't not work. By which I mean, some, it makes sense. You know, the, the trolls scares people away and such. So while it's not... You know, like, I don't feel like I'm commanding the Norse gods as I put this down. At the same time, it's better than colors and numbers and such. So, am I recommending this? Yes, for two to three players. Not so bad. For four to five, never. Never. But I do like it with two to three players. Uh, it's going to be a thinky game because, again, even with two to three players, you still try to think your optimal move and or optimal move that you can work on in the future. It doesn't have to be the best move if you're setting yourself up for later. But in a two to three player game, you only have to wait for one or two people to go. In a four to five player game, no, no, sorry. Uh, so that's what I think. Great with fewer players, horrible with more players. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! That's right. Shut it. Yeah. Yeah.